And now, it's time for another edition of the 12th Man Fan Jam. With your host, the Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Island Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, Magic Voice. This is Moses, and welcome one and all to episode 327, the season-ending awards edition of your 12th Man Fan Jam show, the show made up of Seahawk fans from around the world, just like you, talking about your Seattle Seahawks. Over the next few moments we share together, we hope you are entertained as we discuss your Seattle Seahawks as we prepare to wrap up the Season 3 and have some awards. So sit back, relax, grab a desired beverage or sin of your choice, and remember, there is no off-season in the NFL anymore. As is the usual with every show, I am joined by the 12th Man Fan Jam Posse, a ragtag group of diehard Seahawks fans just like you from around the world. Of course, first is my partner in crime from merry old England, Matt. Hi, Matt. Hello, Moses. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. How are you today? I have a little bit of a cold, but I had to fight through the crowds at the old red carpet to get into the award ceremony tonight. It's been a bit of a been a bit of a mission, really, to get in. I gave you a VIP tag. You forgot it. Yeah, but I wanted to go and take all the pictures of all the people who were milling around on the red carpet outside, and I saw Sierra out there with her little brother when I worked out it was actually Russell Wilson. Oh, Sierra's um, out there. You know, yeah, now that she's not with Future, her present is better than her past. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice. I'll be here the whole show. Um, the whole show. Yeah, also <laughs> here the whole show. I'm just staying in Washington, our very own news hound. His 12th man editorials can be found on the SeahawksSouth.com website. You know him as Shadowhawk, and of course, we know him as Will. Hi, Will. Hi, Moses. Just got done from uh, hanging out with Kanye West on the red carpet. Um, and I just want to say I am your OG podcaster and will be respected as such. <laughs> <laughs> That sounded incredibly white, but we love you anyway. Well, I am what I am. That's I know. <laughs> um, also, yamming who he ams. Uh, also from the state of Washington, our great friend Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Hello, guys. Glad to be back for another one. Back for another one. I don't one have anything ex- funny to say. No, but you're happy to be here. He, he never does. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but he's happy to be here. And we are mm-hmm. to, uh, wow, third season finale is upon us, gentlemen. Uh, before we start, I have a small rant to get off that has nothing to do with anything except Mosette, who does our voiceovers, who is a teenage girl. And uh, when we ride in the car and listen to music, I always, guys are always criticized for having useless information, right? We have all this useless information. We know trivia about stupid stuff. It never means anything ever for anything. No such thing as useless info. It, well, that's I, I, I agree. Every time don't, don't, there's a show, dis- a song on the don't radio, dis- the trivia. exactly. I will give her some useless trivia about whatever's planned. For example, in this case, Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. Tell her a little bit of trivia about Bohemian Rhapsody, and um, she said, "Oh, Dad, today in school they were playing music as the, the, it was a minute left in you know passing period. They started playing music to remind you, and they played Bohemian Rhapsody. And so this guy was next to me." And he started singing it, and I started singing it, and we looked at each other, and I t- said to him, hey, and he told, she told that little piece of information, I told her a little useless information, and she looked at me, and she smiled, and she goes, worked like a charm. <laughs> so, uh oh. Wow. Yeah, yeah, she, she actually listens to me when I say that stuff. I'm, anyway, I just want to share that uh, third season finale is upon us. Let's get to it. For those who have listened before, thanks for joining us again. For those who are listening for the first time, don't worry. We promise we will be gentle. But be careful. It is a season finale. There might be a cliffhanger. Dun, dun, dun. Who knows? Um, the show's run like a real NFL game. We have four quarters, even a halftime. Quarter one, of course, will be news with Will. As always, a good time. Quarter two, we're going to play There Can Be Only One. I'm going to give the, the posse two players that are free agents and they're going to have to pick one, knowing that the other one would be allowed to leave the team. So, I think, wasn't that like Batman and Robin? One of the Batman and Robins, they had to pick one. Does anyone oh, know yeah. what I'm talking about? Uh, oh, yeah, no, actually, I didn't. yeah, you're talking about the one with uh, George Clooney, where uh, he dropped Batgirl and Robin, and uh, Batman had to figure out which one to say. You're talking about I the movie? I want to drop Batgirl every time. Yeah, that's why <laughs> no one knows, because it's the one with Clooney in it. Yeah. No, wait, no, no. It was it was the third one. They dropped Nicole Kidman and Robin at the same time. They dropped Nicole Didn't Kidman like them. a stone. <laughs> is that all? <laughs> yes. Matt, Matt is Batman. One of you is going to drop. Yeah, take her. I don't care. Take her. 
Yeah. Yeah. Nicole Kidman, what are you going to, what could be possibly anything useful about Nicole Kidman whatsoever? <laughs> oh, she's um, redheaded for me, but we, we uh, yeah, she's redheaded for me. I think Chris now. O'Donnell was wearing a perfectly atomic suit and everything, and he had nipples and everything. I mean, what would you want to say there? <laughs> Because All Chris right. O'Donnell was wearing an anatomically correct suit with nipples and everything. Yes. <laughs> but I'll Nicole Kidman's Nicole. redheaded, so. I remember the film very, very, very well. I remember Nicole Kidman very, very well. Halftime, we have our third annual 12th May Fan Jam Awards, season ending awards, known as the Fan Jammies. And I believe I... Will is dressed appropriately for the Fan Jammies. Are you not, Will? Yes, I am a fan in my jammies. Yay! I miss, Moses, I misread the memo. I thought it was the third annual. I'm sorry. No. I just... <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm afraid not, Matt. Oh, I thought oh, the first sorry. thing I Go back to down. sleep. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> feel a bit underdressed now, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you, you shouldn't don't go live to Matt's place. <laughs> yeah, um... you, should have, you should have worn the chaps, Matt. I told you. Um... Damn it. The uh, the third quarter is going to bring us a review of the Pro Bowl because the Seahawks played well. And, and, hey, it's the first time in three years they've actually been at the Pro Bowl. So we'll kind of glance over that. And then fourth quarter, we're going to do our Super Bowl prop bets. I look forward to this. Um, we're gonna I'm going to subject the posse to some prop bets from the Super Bowl over under some of them. Some of them, which is going to be bigger. And I know you all look forward to that. And then, of course, our thank yous and sign offs for season three. But we will be back for season four very quickly. Because the season never really ends. So before we start, we'd like to remind you to like, share, subscribe to Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Contact us on this thread. Comment at the section of the video or feedback or email us, 12manfanjam at gmail.com. Tell us what you think. Join our Facebook group. Please join our Facebook group, 12th Man Fan Jam Show. A lot of fun there. Um, we have a game thread during the games. Of course, that won't be for eight months, so don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter on Seahawk Positivity. And that's that. So now let's get ready to the first quarter and news. Yes, news from around the NFL while you're out desperately fighting a way to prolong the NFL season. Here's our 12th man fan gym news hound Shadowhawk Will with the news brought to you by the Richard Sherman School of Wrestling. Will, what you got for us? Well, Moses, do you remember 10 years ago uh, when Seattle uh, went to their first Super Bowl and they had the team bus actually got into an accident the week before the game? I actually do, yes. Well, uh, Denver is apparently trying to one-up us because they, uh, three of their buses got into an accident this week uh, when returning back to the hotel after practice. A, somebody pulled in front of the convoy and stopped short. The police car at the head of the convoy was able to avoid the other car. However, the buses, in an attempt to keep from running into the car, had to take evasive, accent, ax, evasive action excuse me, and slammed into each other. Uh, fortunately, nobody was hurt, although an, an officer on a motorcycle did have to uh, lay his bike down to avoid hitting the buses. Nothing too serious. Uh, none of the players are hurt. That officer is fine, but... That didn't do much for the Seahawks before their game, so no. I'm wondering. I'm wondering if the car that cut off the convoy has a uh, Panthers bumper sticker on it. Well, it's actually, probably, go ahead. Cam Newton. I said probably Cam Newton. You remember he wrecked his truck last year too. Well, he just it, liked it, doing that kind of thing. It, they're actually in good shape now because their new bus driver is Derek Coleman. So, <laughs> yes, I did it. Uh oh. Yes, I did. <laughs> Hey, that's, that's you had how he, to go there. Hey, he's not going to hear it anyway. Don't worry. Yes, I went Ooh. there. Ooh. I did it. Ooh. Ouch! It's the finale, people. You got to break some eggs to make an omelet. Can't hold anything yeah. back now. I guess uh, no. I've just had an email. I've just had an email, and I don't think our fourth season is going to be is going to be signed up by anybody. There's there's no station willing to take us now, Moses. <laughs> <laughs> well, there wasn't one willing to take, take us, us the way the we are, three. baby. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say Alden Smith, but you know that's that's kind of old. Old. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it didn't add too well for us either. Um, it, actually, Will and I met up in that Super Bowl, didn't we? Yes, you did. The um, day before. I remember, yeah. I remember you coming by Steel Bar, which uh, yes, we actually took over and made into a Seahawks bar for a couple of days. Yes, you did. And, uh, and I'll never forget when all of our friends dressed up to the nines, of course, and the traffic, they decided to go out and stop traffic, and Will jumped up and screamed, Media Horrors, assemble! 
<laughs> that, was awesome. that was kind of the rallying cry that day. That was awesome. Nice. Yeah. That was awesome. Um, what else you got for us, Will? Well, um, unfortunately, one of the more infamous characters in Super Bowl history was uh, former Seahawk and then Falcon safety Eugene Robinson. Ah, yes. Who was busted for solicitation the night before Super Bowl 33. Yep. Got burned for a long touchdown and basically is the poster child of what not to do at the Super Bowl. <laughs> um, to his credit, Robinson has owned up to that ever since. And in fact, uh, talked to the Panthers. Uh, for those who don't know, he is actually their uh, color radio guy oh, uh, for the last yeah. several years. Um, and ta- spoke with the team, uh, basically saying, don't be like me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Trying to warn them uh, to keep from doing anything of the sort. Well, maybe he should have talked to the Broncos as well. (laughs) Um, Practice squad safety and actually Seattle's seventh round pick this year, Ryan Murphy. What is it with safeties at the Super Bowls? Anyway, I don't know. (laughs) But anyway, he was uh, questioned by police on Tuesday as part of a prostitution sting in San Jose. Um, According to a CBS Bay Area report, Murphy was not arrested. But his brother was cited as part of an effort to crack down on prostitution. And even though Ryan Murphy was not arrested, the Broncos sent him back home. Said uh, Gary Kubiak, although practice squad safety Ryan Murphy was not cited by police, we decided it was best for the team if we continued our preparations for Super Bowl 50 without him. Ryan is is returning to Denver, but his status as a practice squad player has not changed at this time. So... For any future, any football players, anybody who may play in the Super Bowl, don't go looking for hookers before the game. Wait till after it. <laughs> no, I think you have to like reserve them ahead of time, so you have time to check check their backgrounds first, make sure they're not a cop. So you sat so, a little bit too much into this, Dustin. I'm just, I'm saying. just saying. I'm yeah. just saying. No, I'm just oh, and, saying. And remember how uh, the story broke the day after last year's Super Bowl about Warren Sapp? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. To, yeah. to uh, prostitutes. So just stay away from the hookers in Super Bowl week. Is it that hard? Thing I, the thing I always liked about Eugene Robert, the thing I always liked about Eugene Robertson's story was that he received that Bart Starr Award the day before, or whatever it yeah. was, which was yeah. the oh, best yeah. exemplifies outstanding character and leadership in the home, on the field, <laughs> and in the community. <laughs> yeah, wait, actually, well, you said, "Is it that hard?" If it's that hard, that's probably why they're looking for a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, but yeah, yeah. Well, like, like you said, though, Matt. I mean, it's it's like, oh yeah, I just got an award uh, celebrating. Uh, Myself on and off the field. Let's go celebrate. <laughs> Let's go celebrate by getting a prostitute. <laughs> hey, here's what it's you don't a job. Get. They need don't get a prostitute. See, this doesn't look. Hey, there's other way. There's no other way to better to celebrate. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, but I do think it's really stupid though, because you figure Super Bowl weekend, all eyes are on you. There's just right. everybody in the world there. All the media outlets. You're going to get caught no matter what kind of dumbass thing you do. So just don't do dumbass things. D- don't be During a dumbass. Super Bowl weekend. <laughs> yeah. Happy Super Bowl. Don't be a dumbass. Yeah. yeah. Good awesome advice. Like that should be else. on a billboard or something. Yeah. Good dumbass. Yeah. Well, the problem is this year it's in San Francisco and half the town wouldn't know how to act if you put that <laughs> in. But, um, <laughs> Just stay Moses home. is on fire tonight. Yeah, I, I am. I'm a little bitter. I'm a little bitter. It's <laughs> been a rough week. Um, <laughs> what else you got for us, Will? Oh, damn. Well, Moses, this uh, last item is for our legions of fans in the uh, Charlotte area. Oh, there's Uh, so many. I I know. We we depend on our uh, North Carolina fans for so much. I just want to say thank you real quick. Yes. But just in case you are looking for a good place to watch the game on Sunday, uh, Panther safety Roman Harper has just the idea for you. Uh, Is that two prostitutes? (laughs) Actually, no. Oh, but okay. this is a, this is a I'm not better gone. way because I don't Super Bowl way. weekend. <laughs> no. um, since he is not using his house, uh, he has posted it on Airbnb to allow a uh, people and person and a their guest to come and watch the football the football game at his house. Oh, uh, that's, the list, that's the dangerous. listing. Kick back on my sofa while watching Super Bowl Fifty on our seventy inch TV. Upon arrival, feel free to check out our indoor, our outdoor junior Olympic pool with an expansive deck and deluxe courtyard, or our 4,000-square-foot spa-inspired health club with yoga room and complimentary fitness classes. 
As evening approaches, prepare your football finest and take advantage of the kitchen. It's where I and my mom spend most of the time preparing for big games. Um, the cost to rent Harper's house for the day is $5,000. Uh, Airbnb is actually matching the sum, and the total amount will go to benefit Harper's Hope 41 Foundation. Harper says he'll also throw in a signed football for good measure. So, hey, if it's still available, why not? Well, what the hell could possibly go wrong? I don't know. I, <laughs> my first guess kind would of be a, cool idea. a lot. Yeah. It's I a cool think idea that's a cool idea, for charity. Though. That's nice, but. Yeah. Man, they, he has to have security there or something to monitor the whole thing. There's no oh, way. God. They're just going to give hope. the keys to two random people. All you got to uh, do is you got to get some illegal drugs. You got to hide him somewhere in his house. You then got to leave. <laughs> you then got to phone God. the police. Tell him you're still on a roll now. He gets arrested, and then you know he never plays again. It's a great do it all. Yeah, have oh HGH sent to his house in his mom's name. <laughs> yep, totally. little little oh bit goodness. of Adderall. Yeah. <laughs> Bestiality porn hidden away somewhere. Oh my God. Right. If he's got a smart TV, there might be an app where you can pull up something on the yeah, internet. Like yeah, that. Lo log yeah. on to his computer and start searching midget wrestling or something. <laughs> <laughs> Look, How Dustin only made one of those films, all right? There's only one film of Dustin midget wrestling. It's not wrestling. I prefer Lucha Libre. <laughs> <laughs> Serve return. That, though, um... Uh, I don't, I don't think Will knows TC, but I know uh, Dennis and um, and Matt do. He was telling me a story one time about, uh, you know, it was a Motherland event. And he him and uh, this guy, Kenny, from Arizona were in an elevator. And um, this older couple gets in the elevator in front of them. And uh, they look at TC and they're like, man, you look really familiar. Do, you, do we know you from somewhere? And just his first thing comes out of his mouth is, do you watch midget porn? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> just hilarious you know it would be funnier if you if you say that and they say why i'm just curious that's nothing to do with me i was just wondering if we watch midget porn <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> actually it would have been funnier as if he had said that and the couple had been like that's where i saw it. yes i do <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah oh my Autumn god i don't know this whole host and you know harper letting people in his house with five thousand dollars i just I don't think this is a great idea. I'm sorry. It's it's the kind of thing. It's a great idea in the abstract, but it's yeah. the kind of thing where you know somebody's just going to ruin it for all involved. You know, you know, Johnny yeah. Manziel's going to turn up with a crate of beer and stuff. You know, oh, it's gonna go <laughs> do you not think that Roman Harper on Saturday night before the game, I'm not going to sleep anyway, probably, but he's going to be laying in bed, and all of a sudden his eyes are going to get wide. He's going to go, "What the heck did I do?" Yeah. He'll give up a touchdown because he's worried about somebody bringing a hooker into his house. Yeah, really. Oh shit! He'll have security cameras on. I'm sure. I yeah. mean, on my on my phone, I, I can look at my house and make sure there's nothing going on. So I'm sure he'll have the same kind of thing on his phone. Man, I wouldn't wow. do that. No I've chance. I've got an impression of Dustin's house like Fort Knox, you know, with like CCTV <laughs> cameras and <laughs> machine gun posts. And... Yeah, you don't. The, the, you the don't machine want gun in front sentries. of my house. They'll fire. Yeah. <laughs> The, the machine gun sentries from the uh, um, director's cut of Aliens, you know, the whole nine yards. <laughs> Absolutely. Be careful, Dustin. will shoot your kneecaps off. <laughs> um, Moses, so. that's low. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. Well, thank you so much for the news, sir. Anytime. I appreciate it. And let's go ahead and let's end the first quarter. It's the end of the first quarter, bitches. Lots of great shows still ahead. The fan jammies at halftime. Pro Bowl recapping. Super Bowl prop betting. But after the break, we play a scary version of There Can Be Only One. Coming up right after this. You're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam. On the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Holy shit, it's the second quarter. Yes, welcome to the second quarter as we take a look at the Seahawk free agents as they stand now. And I make the posse make a tough decision. Yes, let's mess with the heads of the posse in a quarter length edition of There Can Be Only One. There Can Be Only One. one, one. Oh my. Yes, there can be only one, the game that I play to brilliantly torture the posse. Here's how it's played. I will place two potential Seahawk free agents side by side, forcing the posse to pick only one to remain on the team. 
This means that if they pick one, the other player will no longer be on the Seahawks. Now, obviously, we hope that in real life, we'll, we won't have to make such a decision. But our posse is not as fortunate to hope for such a fate. So, gentlemen, let's get right to it. I'm going to jump right in with, with uh, Will. Will, there can be only one. There can be only one, one, one. Oh, my. Russell Okun or J.R. Sweezy? Okay. Um, all things being equal, or are we taking contracts into, into the equation? I think let's take all things equal. Let's just say we'll be able to afford them. or But that can be okay. a factor, I guess, in, in them not being here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it's, you know, I think it's going to take more money to uh, keep Okung rather than Sweezy, but um, I think it's going to take less than it would have if Okung wasn't having surgery for the 754th time and <laughs> um, and he wasn't acting as his own agent, which I think is going to end up dropping the amount he's going to get considerably. Yeah. Uh, between the two, <laughs> I would take Okung over Sweezy for a couple of reasons. First, um, Left tackles are harder to find than guards. Um, Okung, yes, you have the injury issues, but when healthy, he's been a Pro Bowl left tackle. Um, as I said, uh, I don't think the price tag is going to be as high as it would be if he had an agent and wasn't hurt. And also, uh, when you're looking at Sweezy, I'm a big fan of Mark Glowinski. I thought he did a great mm. job uh, filling in for Sweezy in the Cardinals game. And I think I'd be okay going into next year. I mean, there's going to be competition at the position because it's Pete Carroll's always compete. But I feel comfortable going into next year with Glowinski, uh, a part of the competition at right guard. I think he can take it and run with it. All right. Um, Will, you're an ignorant slut. I would pick James. Why, Sweezy. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I will take the counter, and then we'll let Dustin and, and, and Matt talk. But I would take J.R. Sweezy. For the standpoint that when you said when healthy, Okun, and that's really the key to Okun, <laughs> when healthy. Give me – I'm to the point now where I would rather take a halfway decent left tackle that's there for 16 games than take a Pro Bowl guy that shows up half the time. But I dig where you're coming from. Uh, Matt, what's your thoughts? I, I actually agree with Will. Um, to a of course point. you do. I, well, I do because um, I watched, having watched Sweezy quite a lot, I don't think Sweezy sometimes has seems to have struggled, and um, I think yeah, it would be easy to replace. So yeah, I would. I, although broke no Brocoon is like him Broken Okun, um, just needs to just just get healthy, just like for try and do three games on the bounce at least. Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, Dustin, what are your thoughts? I was thinking about this earlier today, actually, and. Earlier today, I was thinking I'd take Okun because the offensive line is by far it was our, our worst group this year, and he's probably the best player of that group, and taking the best player away from the group doesn't really help, especially when his replacement is going to be somebody that's um, probably not as good. But again, like you said, when he's healthy, and I had forgot about his surgery until you guys just mentioned it, so I, I think I'm leaning more towards Sweezy at this point. Because I think that um, he's going to be less expensive one. Um, he's only going to get better. He's younger and he's more durable. And uh, there's a certain toughness to him that I like. So I, yeah, I think that we, too. I think that uh, I'd rather keep Sweezy. Well, you know, speaking of of Russell here, Russell Okung, he is actually here at the award show. It's coming up at halftime. He's walking down the uh, the red carpet right now. Oh, oh no! Look out! Oh, he's broken again, guys. I was going to say, it's probably not him if he's walking. It's oh, wait a minute. He's getting up. He's getting up. Oh, wait. No, no, he fell again. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, all things being equal, my preferable option is to travel back in time to 1997, clone Walter Jones, and then bring amen. him back here. Okay? Amen to that. Yes. That was kind of a rough one, Will. Um, Matt, I'm going to give you this. No, I'm going to give Dustin this one. Oh, man. Dustin, there Nervous. can be only one. There can be only one, one, one. Oh, my. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Jeremy Lane whammy, whammy. or Deshaun Shade. <sighs> Ooh. Um. Jeremy Lane. I'm taking Jeremy Lane. Okay. And I, it's, it's because, um. Of his experience and the way he plays in the system, and I just I feel like that uh, the secondary was really struggling 
even when uh, Shed was in there. And then when Lane came back, the secondary seemed to just it synced better. And I think it's because of that familiarity level that everybody, okay. like Sherman and, and Earl and Cam, the familiarity they had with Lane, I think that made a huge difference. So I, yeah. I would keep him and let, uh, let Shed go. All right, Matthew? Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, I think when he came back, everything sort of started to click again. So he clearly has got a, an important part to play in that system. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I agree with Dustin. William? Well, I just look at what the team did. Um, uh, when Jeremy Lane had been back for a couple of weeks, he ended up starting over Deshaun Shedd. So I would go with Lane also. But I thought Shedd did uh, better than he was given credit for. And yeah. uh, with Lane getting some starting expense, you know, the price tag may be too high. So if we yeah. go in, in there, I think we draft a cornerback regardless. But mm-hmm. if we have to go in there with Shedd and no Lane, I, I feel I'm I kind feel of okay. I'm kind of with you guys. I'm with the Jeremy Lane camp as well. That's a pretty easy one, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, so. This is going to be a tough one for Matt. Matt. It is. There can be only one. There can be only one. one, one. Oh my. Yep. Marcus Burley or Cooper Helfit? Cooper Helfit. <laughs> really? Pure, yeah, purely for. Just purely because. Um. <laughs> He's a star. Uh, he's a star in the making. Uh, he can do so much. He's really versatile because he can do knitwear. He can do gentleman's wear. <laughs> he can do swimwear. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, you need that sort of versatility on a team. Um, and he's got his Instagram account. has got at least 10,000 followers, of which at least 2,000 of them are my own fake accounts. Because um, I have to keep making, I have to make fake accounts because they keep like blocking the other ones. Um, and I'm not allowed to make accounts in my own name anymore because the authorities have, have warned me that if I keep doing that, I will go to prison. So, yeah, it's got to be Cooper Helford for me. I can't imagine any reason why we wouldn't keep him at all. Ever. Well, um, Dustin, you want to you wanna talk about this one? I'm going to say uh, not Cooper help it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and just primarily because uh, Jimmy Graham, I fully expect him to be back and play next year. You have Luke Wilson. Those guys are pretty good. And then you can, the third stringers, you know, they have just like this carousel of third, four stringers they bring in. And um, they seem to do all right. So yeah. I, Cooper doesn't really add a whole lot to the table on the football field. Apparently he does. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, but... <laughs> I had talked about the football stuff, yeah. Well, <laughs> well and, and you know, Will, Burley, I really like the way he plays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, de- depth at corner, I think, is a more pressing issue than depth at tight end. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I like to say that you can't stop Cooper Helfit. You can only hope to. <laughs> oh, Matt. But yeah, I, would, Matt I, would I would have to, to go Burley. I'm sorry, Matt. <laughs> I just don't think I just don't think you guys quite understand what he brings to um, <laughs> the depth of the tight end. <laughs> to the depth I don't of the tight end. Um, I don't think I want to understand, so I'm I'm okay with where, where I'm at right now. Yeah, because okay. I mean, whichever team he ends up going to, I might have to move. I might have to be oh, a bad no, 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 no! You're I not going just, anywhere, young man. I can't probably move it. to the the London Jaguars. So. That'll do it. Oh dear, <laughs> that'll do. You're it. not going yeah. anywhere, sir. Um, the last one I'll start, and it's really not free agents, but it, it is probably going to be an issue, and there can only be one. There can be only one, one, one. Oh my. And if you could only do one, Michael Bennett or Cam Chancellor. Both these guys were unhappy going into the season. Both of them feel like they should be paid more. If you could, the idea that you would re-sign one, and then let the other one go via trade or something. Who would you pick between Michael Bennett or Cam Chancellor? For me, I'll start this one. This decision is a lot easier now than I thought it would be at the beginning of the year. I hate to say it. Cam never, never seemed to get on track. Michael Bennett right now is simply playing like one of the best defensive linemen in football. Top five, top three. I put him top three. The man played through the season. I know it was his wife that kept him from holding out, but pay <laughs> the man. Michael Bennett should be paid as one of the best defensive linemen to play the game because right now he is one of the best defensive linemen to play the game. Cam, just to me, between the two of them, 
you get that pass rusher, it doesn't matter who you have at safety. And I kind of like what McCray did when Cam wasn't there. I don't, he's no Cam, but he wasn't terrible. So I'm going with like, Bennett. I, I, I think that they should reward Bennett for turning up for all of those games and they should not reward Chancellor. I don't think it's right that Chancellor should get any more money for the fact that he was given some really terrible advice at the start of the season um, and he basically put his own career and himself ahead of the team and everything else that we were trying to achieve and when he did come back he wasn't all that good all the time so I'm quite okay with with you know giving Bennett a little bit of a reward and um, and saying bye bye to old Chancellor. Yeah and I'm I think, with you. I think we're at the point where uh, Chancellor still has some trade value. Yeah, I mean, we need to bring in some linemen. There are some mm-hmm. good linemen out there that we could probably get for as part of a trade for Chancellor. And with all the with all the speculation, all the way he plays, you know, who knows how many more years Chancellor has left? Too, I yeah. think I think Bennett's going to have a longer career than Cam Chancellor will. Mm-hmm. So we could look back on this and say, hey, we uh, unloaded him at exactly the right time. Right. Great point, I, Dustin. I don't know, because Bennett's, what, 30, 31, right? And um, usually defensive linemen like that, they're not going past about 34. Now that's when they kind of start to break down and they start to kind of tank. And he's only got a couple years left. Chancellor, he's such a, a figure in the locker room, and he's such a – like the, the team rallies around the dude. They always say he's the enforcer, and he's like a, a rally point for him. So when he goes out there and makes the play – that team loves it, and they really, really um, go for it. I, if Marshawn Lynch is gone, I would hate to lose a Marshawn and a Cam Chancellor in the same year. But then again, Michael Bennett is so dynamic uh, with what he can do and his versatility on the defensive line. But it's I, I don't know. I have a really, really hard the, time with the trick one. is. The, the thing is, though, Dustin, is how much money are you prepared extra to pay Chancellor? Because you know he's going to want more money this year. Yeah, that's a good point. And the trade idea that you guys mentioned isn't such a bad thing, especially with uh, two, like maybe Dan Quinn down in Atlanta. I'm sure he'd love to have a Cam Chancellor down there with that defense. Yeah, and, uh, and, and hopefully none of this really happens. Like we're playing a game here. You know, it's not really that this is actually the way it's going to be. They make it on both. Who knows? Well, I yeah. well they they have them both for uh, yeah right under contract. Yeah, they, they, Chancellor's I would, not going anywhere. <laughs> I, I would I would go to Chancellor and say, look. You're not getting squat. Are you okay with that? And if he says no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold. Yeah. In my mind, you seriously look at the trade option. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. All right. Um, and with that option, we will option out of the second quarter. Holy sh! It's halftime. All right, it's now halftime. It's time to get ready, get dressed up, and time to get on the red carpet for our third annual 12th Man Fan Jam Season Awards. Yes, the fan jammies are coming up right after this. Hey, this is Matt, all the way from Merry Old England, and you're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam. Yes, live from, well... Pretty much everywhere. It's the third annual 12th Man Fan Jam Award Show. That's right. I'm your Master Ceremonies, Moses, and we're here to salute another great Seahawks season by taking the best of the very best and giving them a fan jammy. Thank you very much. All right. We got a great crowd here. Everyone's dressed up. I'm going to turn the crowd down a little bit, turn the music down a little bit. Uh, Will, you're looking great in your jammies. Thank you. I, I, I figure they go. They match the bow tie nicely. They do. They definitely do. Um, and then, um, uh, Matt, I, I, I'm glad you changed. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks. This dress is Dior. Um, it's full-length <laughs> silver. It's lovely. It's gorgeous. All right. And, and Dustin? Yeah. Well, you know, you look pretty good, too, I guess. Well, you know, that's what I do when I'm not wearing anything, dude. Sorry, <laughs> world. Oh, goodness. <laughs> we'll cover you up later. It's my world. Did you say it's my world? <laughs> Don't worry about that. Just me. Dear Lord, it's my world. All right. But one of the well, seven dwarfs, Stumpy. <laughs> like Jim, it's like Jim Carrey at that one award show. He's just wearing the leaf. Oh, I remember that, yes. <laughs> right? Oh, dear Lord. Um, well, listen, before we get any farther, I do want to talk about 
you know, we want to talk about how the winners were chosen. And it was a very scientific process. So um, <laughs> here, here's what happened. The people from around the world voted for their favorites in each of the categories given. Those votes were then tabulated. The list of winners was placed into a sealed envelope. That envelope was then placed into an empty wine bottle from Johnny Manziel's locker room. And that wine bottle was then placed in a locked safe. The safe was then cast out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean where it rested on the ocean floor before being found, resurfaced, and sent by Carnival Cruise Line to New York City. Once in New York City, it was sent across the country by Carrier Pigeon to Seahawk Positivity Productions where it was then placed by me in a room without windows or light to sit protected by a 350-pound Rottweiler named Tiny. Right before the show, I gave Tiny a three-pound steak to distract him while I gently tiptoed in the room, grabbed the envelope, and ran like hell to the awards show. All right. It seems a tad yeah. impractical. Well, you know, we have to we have to guard it. But we have a great audience for this show. I mean, really, you know, give you all selves a hand. You look great. And fantastic. And there's some celebs here. I, I see Jimmy Graham. Is that Jimmy? Oh, Jimmy's here. Jimmy, it's great to see you. How are you, sir? You look great. Flew half the crowd into the show today, didn't you? Yeah, that, that explains the air sickness bags I saw in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I kid you. He's a great pilot. Although when asked, God declined to be his co-pilot because he was too dangerous to fly with. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, Jimmy. You know, Jimmy played two sports at the University of Miami. Well, three if the sorority sisters are a sport. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> But he played basketball and football, which explains why the first time he caught a pass in the end zone, he tried to dribble the football. <laughs> but, you know, Jimmy started out as a rookie, and we have other rookies. And speaking of rookies, our first award tonight is going to Rookie of the Year for the Seahawks. The nominees are Thomas Rawls, Tyler Lockett, and Frank Clark. And the fan Jimmy for Rookie of the Year goes to Tyler Lockett. Tyler, Tyler Lockett, congrats, Tyler. Unfortunately, Tyler cannot be here. He's currently moonlighting as a pizza delivery man. He just runs to your pizza in 30 seconds or less. But here to accept the award on behalf is Posse member Dustin. Dustin. Right? All right. So uh, let me read what he wrote out here. First, he says uh, he'd like to thank his parents um, for letting him out on Sundays to play with his friends. He appreciates Uh. that. Yeah, he'd uh, like to thank his teammates for uh, allowing him to be there. Love Seahawks. Thank you for drafting him. Uh, he'd also like to thank his teammates for his very original nickname, uh, No E. For those of you who don't know, his nickname is No E because at the end of his name, there is no E. I'm uh-huh. like Ricardo Lockett. Got it. And uh, so he's looking forward to next season, wants to uh, go out there and uh, break the records for the returns. On both kicks and punts. That's a kid with some lofty goals. That's very nice. Very nice. Congratulations, Tyler Lockett. All right. right on well, let's see here. Before we give the last award, who else is out here? Now? Oh, look, there's Richard Sherman. Richard, you made it. I knew you would. This guy shut down more people than East Coast Snowstorm. Yes, he did. This guy covers so much area, even Verizon is jealous. <laughs> Uh, but that, that Pro Bowl sweep, though, that you ran in the Pro Bowl, Richard, I, you know, I guess after your Pro Bowl sweep, the only sweep you're going to be seeing in a Seahawk uniform is when we sweep the 49ers. That's, <laughs> I don't want to say I played in work, but I've seen better sweeps in a Mary Poppins movie. All right. <laughs> chim, 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 chiru. Yes. Thank you. Richard, like Richard is nominated, uh, this evening. Uh, he was been nominated in the past for defensive player of the year. So let's go ahead and see who else is nominated for Defensive Player in the Year. And the nominations this year are Michael Bennett, Cliff Averill, K.J. Wright, and Earl Thomas. And the winner for Defensive Player of the Year, the fan jammy goes to Michael Bennett. This is Michael Bennett's first fan jammy. He's been nominated twice for the award. Michael Bennett could not be here. His wife wouldn't let him come. So accepting the award on his behalf, is our posse member, Will. Congratulations, Will. Uh, Black Santa says that uh, statuette needs a little beard on it. All right. <laughs> Short and sweet to the point, and we'll move Love on. It. Hey, who else is out in that crowd? Well, oh, there's Beast Mode, Marshawn. No, Marshawn, don't speak. No, I've got it for you, okay? 
Marshawn cracked a Panthers helmet in the playoffs this year. He's more hard-headed than a bullhead in concrete. It's true. You know, Marshawn is also, in the past, a, a winner and has, has been nominated in the past for Offensive Player of the Year. But let's see who was nominated this year for Offensive Player of the Year. Your nominations are Doug Baldwin, Jermaine Curse, Thomas Rawls, and Russell Wilson. And the winner for Offensive Player of the Year is... Russell Wilson! This is Russell Wilson's second fan jammy for Offensive Player of the Year. He's been nominated all three times. Russell Wilson could not be here. He gave Sierra two tickets to anywhere in the world, and she chose Toledo, Ohio for some reason. I don't know why. Anyway, here to accept the award on behalf is Posse member Matt. Matt? Thank you, Moses. Yeah, Russell uh, obviously couldn't be here, as, as Moses said, and also because he wouldn't be able to reach this microphone to be able to give this speech anyway. Um, all he wants to know is, that he, can he please, 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 please have some sex very soon? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Like Who with a girl? Oh. Like with anything at the moment. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> cool. Oh, my God. Is that, ladies and gentlemen... We have a special guest. Sean Alexander is here. Sean, you came. I didn't think you would. You look great, buddy. Of course, you look great probably because all that falling down probably helped you keep your face. I'm guessing. <laughs> this guy, though. 27 touchdowns, right? 27? 27. He scored more that year than James Conn at the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> look it up, kids. Just amazing. You know, he was always smiling. Always. You didn't know if he was just high on life or he was just high. You never knew. And I'm kidding. I know. Yeah, Jesus and all that. All right. Listen, Alexander knew how to score. And that brings us to nominations for Seahawks score of the year. Your nominees are Lockett's punt return against the Rams, Rawls's run against the Bengals, and Baldwin's game winner against the Steelers. And the fan jammy for score of the year goes to... Doug Baldwin's game-winning touchdown against the Steelers. This Yay. is Doug Baldwin's first win and first nomination in the category for score of the year. Doug could not be here. He's busy taking anger management therapy, but to accept the award on his behalf is me. And I know if Doug was here, he'd probably thank Russell Wilson for the pass and the Steelers for not catching him. And other than that, he'd probably say something like, you know, it's a team sport, I give glory to God, something like that, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, there. Okay, so... Let's take a look at the other one last time. Oh, is that Pete Carroll? Pete Carroll is here, everyone. Get excited. Pete Carroll, what a guy. What a great guy. And those locker room speeches, jumping up on lockers like some superhero. I tell you, this guy is now the oldest coach in the NFL now that Tom Coughlin is gone. But you never guess the way he runs around the field. It's like someone dipped his gum in Red Bull or something. I don't know. He is so excited that at his, his age, if he took Viagra, he'd probably time travel. It's true. <laughs> Pete's won a lot of games, and I'm sure he was happy when the Seahawks won. All of these games that are nominated for Seahawks Game of the Year, and your nominations are Seahawks over the Steelers, 39-30, Seahawks over the Bears, 26-0, Seahawks over the Vikings, 38-6, and the Seahawks over the Cardinals by a score of 36-6. And the award for Game of the Year goes to... It's the Pittsburgh Steeler game. 39 to 30. Yay. This is the first fan jamming for the Steelers and the first one they've ever been nominated for. On behalf of the Steelers, I'd like to accept this award. I'd like to thank their shoddy defensive backfield for making this possible. I'd like to thank Ben Roethlisberger for keeping it in his pants long enough to wave the white flag at the end of that game to ensure a Seahawks victory. I mean, Landry Jones, really? And I like to thank the terrible towels because they come in quite useful when I run out of toilet paper at home. Yes. Now, before we conclude, there are just a couple quick awards we like to give out. First, the 12th Man Fan Jam Trivia Champion. The winner of too many trivia contests this season. He dominated the way that our Seahawks usually dominate on the field. Congratulations, Matt, from Married Old England for getting the champ Trivia Champion Award. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank all uh, my competitors uh, for playing along with me and for being utterly crap. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I was going to say, I think you use the word competitors Anytime. loosely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah in a technical sense, almost. Yes. Yeah. Um, secondly, our 12th Man Fan Jam Prediction and Prognostication Champion, as we kept score during the year. 
for the third season was our very own new sound, Will. Congratulations, Will. You like me. You really like me. <laughs> He's our he's our, our Nostra dumbass for the show. And finally, <laughs> our winner of the Happy to Be Here Award is the guy that's always happy to be here. It goes to Dustin. Congratulations, Dustin. And the filler award. The filler award. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets an award. You're happy to accept this award, Dustin? Of course I am. Now that's we are missing some. Any from attention. The- yeah, any we are missing someone from the show that was uh, a big part of the season, and that is our man behind enemy lines, our silent assassin. Um, and that is that is Mark. Uh, he coined He's maybe really the funniest. Yeah, yeah. Okay, moment of silence for Mark. Even though he's not dead, uh, the man who coined maybe the funniest behind the scenes comment for caption that picture. Um, our award for best caption that picture caption goes to <laughs> Sassman and Mark for the following behind the scenes never before heard, before heard audio. And give you a warning: you might want to close the kids' ears for the next minute or so. But here. <laughs> Is what Mark <laughs> wins the award. I had something along the lines of a Nickelodeon bukkake, but I thought that was. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious me! Did you just say Nickelodeon bukkake? I thought that'd be in poor taste. Oh my god! Oh, my god. oh yeah, that's gonna be on the outtake reel. Oh my god! Nickelodeon bukkake. I can't get out my head. <laughs> I'm going can, to unmute. You must be desperate for viewers. Moses, before I forget, you you should upload this show to a Japanese website. Just remember that. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, no no tentacles, though. Oh, oh, oh Lordy. Nickelodeon Bukaki Party. That is wrong. <laughs> so many Maybe levels. that's what LaShawn McCoy was planning. <laughs> <laughs> he also the Powderpuff Girls in a whole oh, new light. God, okay, shit. here we go. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh, my tears. Ooh. Come on, people. Okay, that that is spectacular. But oh dear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but maybe just maybe, the outtake of the year goes to this moment from behind the scenes of the last episode, where I just couldn't seem to get it together to start the third quarter. <laughs> Oh, it's been a fun show. All right, third quarter, we're going to talk about the season. Here we go. At least I have a sack. Big hairy one. How would you know that? Me and Mrs. Moses talk. How would she know? (laughs) All right. Um, (laughs) Do you remember the honeymoon? (laughs) We have two kids, so I guess there's that. Usually, you know. In, in the Post, dark, and there's Postman a lot of screaming is, and crying. Postman is so proud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, there, I just, I know it's pitch black, and there's a lot of crying and screaming. That's all I remember. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and that was just Dennis. <laughs> and that was me. <laughs> like I, said, I slept like a baby. I was up every two hours, and I wet myself. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, okay, third quarter. Here we go. Oh, dear. <clears throat> Yeah, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna pass it to Will. Oh, uh, we're just, just <laughs> not. That's not what I said. <laughs> no thanks. I'm gonna pass it to Will. All right, third quarter. Here we go. <laughs> I can't. Sorry, I'm going to. I'm wow. going to. I, I I'm gonna do made... it. I'm gonna do it. I'm... <clears throat> third quarter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh man, Matt's never getting back to sleep. <gasps> oh, there it is, folks. <laughs> Our fearless <laughs> leader, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Oh dear. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He wonder why this show is such a car crash at times. I, I was crying you. at some point in that. I know. <laughs> God. Oh, we, we, we get paid nothing for this, folks. All right. Believe it or not. Believe, Believe it or not. It or not. <laughs> And speaking of not getting paid, that is the end of our third annual Fan Jammy Awards. What a great group of winners, and what a great show. And again, we finished right on time. We cut some musical numbers out. I'm sorry, Will. What about Pia Zadora's <laughs> dance number? <laughs> That'll be at the after show. But uh, we're going to take a quick break here. We're going to change into some less formal attire. Hopefully, Dustin will get dressed. And we'll return to the second half. <laughs> I'm your fan, 12th Man Fan Jam Show, coming up next.
You're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Holy shit, it's the third quarter. Welcome to the second half of episode 327 of your 12th Man Fan Jam show, the special season three finale slash award show. We just had a wonderful halftime award show, the Fan Jammies, our third annual Fan Jammies. And uh, we're going to talk briefly in the third quarter about the Pro Bowl. For the first time in three years, there were Seahawks at the Pro Bowl, which was interesting under the new format. Um, Will, what were your what are your thoughts about watching the Seahawks play in the Pro Bowl? Obviously, we won the Super Bowl, but what were your thought about thoughts about the Pro Bowl? Well, the the Pro Bowl in the last several years has become such a joke, and that's why it was actually fun to have the Seahawks in it this year because. They seem to be the only people that care about playing in it. I mean, Russell Wilson goes out there. It's like he's uh, in a playoff game. You have uh, Richard Sherman running a sweep and Bobby Wagner uh, tackling him and just uh, Michael Bennett being all over the place. It's, I mean, these guys take it seriously than I think more seriously than anybody else in, in that game. Yeah. And yet they had more fun than anybody, too. And I think that's important. Um you know, we mentioned on the last show, I had mentioned that, you know, um, Schneider had mentioned that um, these guys have played more games the last two years than anybody else. And, you know, you don't ever want to not play in the Super Bowl, but maybe they need a little break. And they were able to go over and, and kind of rub rub elbows with guys from different teams, get to know them, let them get to know them a little bit. The media fell in love with the Seahawks because not only did they play well, but they were having a lot of fun doing it. Um, I, one guy wrote for NFL.com, look, you know, I know you can't have it until after the Super Bowl. We probably won't see them back here next year. Odds are they'll be in the Super Bowl next year. But, man, it was fun having the Seahawks around. And that they're getting a good rep. And, and I'm going to ask Dustin here in a minute, but I want to get this out before I forget. All the Patriots didn't go. Every single one, or seven of them. Some of them had good reasons. I know one of them just had a baby. I get that. But none of the Patriots went. Our guys Bye, went and and got to know the other players. The other players got to know them. You know, the Patriots are just reinforcing to the rest of the NFL what we already know, that they're jackholes because they're not going over and hanging out with these guys and getting to know them on a different level. You know, and our guys did. And I used to think, man, I don't want to go to the Pro Bowl. But, you know, after watching our guys this week, I kind of dug it. I kind of enjoyed seeing them hanging out with other guys and – you know, the rest of the NFL, meanwhile, the Patriots, nobody got to hang out with the Patriots. And they're just further excluding themselves from the rest of the NFL, in my opinion. What do you think, Dustin? No, I think it was kind of a fun consolation prize. Uh, anytime I watch the Pro Bowl, I go into it thinking, okay, maybe it'll be fun. And then usually I walk away like, God, that's why I hate the Pro Bowl. Mm-hmm. But this year, at least the Hawks were in there and they were out there having fun. And it was good to see him show up big. I told my wife going into it, I was like, well, I, I think they're probably – going to try mm-hmm. she was she's like why nobody ever does i was like because of the culture that seattle has that right that always compete culture i was like i don't think they can go in there and and not play at least a little no. bit hard they're going to want to compete and i think that goes uh, the, the culture of the team is also why the media liked them because yeah. they're encouraged to be themselves and do their thing and say what they're going to say and so they're not afraid of the media a team like belichick's they don't want their players saying anything to the media they're ultra conservative about what goes on and what's said. And there's like this huge veil in front of everybody. They don't want to let anything out. But the Seahawks are like, no, nah, dude, go out there, have fun, do whatever right. you're going to do. And I think the, the media appreciate, appreciated that. And it showed on the field. They're just going out there making plays, having fun. Michael Bennett's touchdown that he should have, honestly, he should have had. Yeah. I guess uh, somebody looked at him too hard as he was running. So they called him down. Yeah. And, and then, uh, He's out there dancing with the mascots, you know? Yeah. They, they made it fun. But- they did. They did. Matt, we were the bad guys a couple years ago. Um, and I think this really, I mean, I think we've 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 kind of dampened that year by year. But I think their appearance in the Pro Bowl really dampened it because people came back with a little bit of a, a soft spot for the Seahawks now. Yeah. Yeah, it's the Pro Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> um- it's it's a very I mean I I did start to watch the first part and it was good to see the throws it was good to see Sherman get beat by Lockett that made me laugh yeah um you know there mm-hmm. was there was some good little moments in there I mean you're right about the Patriots look the Patriots are just 
well, they're assholes, and yeah. but and they take after their coach who wants them to be an asshole. You know, yes. I mean, mm-hmm. so so you can't really blame them. That's just what they're told to do, and they just do it because that's the way they are. So they're they're never going to turn up and be part of the group because they never want to be part of the group. We we always compete. That's our motto. That's been our motto for years. Always compete. So when if you're going to play a game, you may as well at least have a bit of fun whilst you're doing it. That's the other thing we do, and that's so really what they were doing out there was all playing Seahawks football, which is to mm-hmm. compete and have fun because mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. how we run so yeah it was i'm sure it, it was great for everybody i still I, and do you know what just because we're in it it still doesn't mean that the pro bowl means an awful lot to me because it yeah. really doesn't um and it's you know i'd much rather i have to say and I've, I've, I've said this before i'm sure but i'll say it again now i would much rather lose the international series of games that happen over in london and happen, will be happening in mexico next year as well um, i'd yeah. rather lose all of them and i would much rather take the pro bowl Pro Bowl around the world. Yes. And have that as the, you know, so it's I, not in Hawaii. Take goodness, it everywhere. Yes. yes. Um, so, so keep the NFL as it was and just move that around every year. I'd much rather do that. I'd much rather get to see a myriad of players that, on a game that doesn't really matter um, play around the world and spread the game that way. But that's just me. That's just my take on it. Wonderful that's not, idea. That's not a bad idea at all. No, I, I kind of, the idea of the Pro Bowl itself, I don't like. I think you'd get more of the superstar to show up if it wasn't a game. Like, have a skills competition. You know, quarterbacks out there doing quarterbacks things, running backs yeah. doing whatever, running yeah, backs, you know. Yeah, quarterbacks to quarterback, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, you know, I, thought, I think that would be more fun. And I think that's where it's going to end up in a couple of years because mm-hmm. uh, Good- Goodell in his comments this week was clearly not happy with the Pro Bowl. But one, one thing I did enjoy, the jerseys actually looked yeah, they pretty look cool good. this year. Yes, they did. Yeah. I'm actually toying with the idea of getting one. Yeah. Where, I, I wanted to until I saw the hundred eight dollar tag tag, and I said, "You know what? Well, I've got a gift card, so." Oh yeah. well, there you go. I've never thought to buy, buy a Pro Bowl jersey before. I didn't. Even, they're there on NFL.com. I never even thought to look. Yeah, if you go on NFL.com, they're not available for another few weeks. But uh, oh wow, yeah, I do like them. One seventy four ninety five. Golly, there you go. Uh, yeah, I liked them. Um, so so let's let's kind of piggyback off of what you guys said. So Matt kind of said the future of the Pro Bowl doesn't look good, and, and Will said that it seemed like Goodell said it. So Matt brought the suggestion of the skills competition. Um, anybody else have something different, or they think that's a great idea, or moving it to London or around the, the – I think that's a great idea, Matt. Anybody else got a good idea like that? Uh, I'm just surprised Matt's getting credit for all of the ideas. <laughs> <laughs> it's like trivia. Matt always wins. I know. Yeah, I know. damn suck up. Don't say okay. Matt, don't. Okay, so yeah, Matt told me to say that, so just give yeah. him credit. It's fine. <laughs> well, I'd always thought when LA didn't have a team that you make the Super Bowl and the Pro Bowl <laughs> in LA. They still and, don't. And, and, <laughs> yeah. <Ouch>. yeah. <laughs> but and then instead of sending them to London, you have teams once a week play in LA, as you know, around whatever. You know, you're going to LA to play the Rams or whatever. And, you know, they don't need it. They don't need to have a team. They would have a game every week. It would be somebody different. They'd and have they'd the Pro Bowl. They could, they could have the Super Bowl. They could have the Pro Bowl. You know, I, to me, that was the, to me, the answer to LA was that, but, um, you know, not now that the Rams are there, but what do yeah. I know? Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think how they could get other people to show up. Because you don't want to force them to, because, I mean, no. you, they could easily force them to. Like, if your team's in the Super Bowl, you're not at the Pro Bowl. If you have a legit medical reason to not be there, you're in the Pro Bowl. Otherwise, you're there if you get voted in. That would, I have a feeling that'd make it worse. The product on the field would probably be oh, worse. Oh, easy. Easily. And you I, get you a know, lot of people there that wouldn't want to be there. So it's just, yeah. it's not a good idea. Yeah. And yeah I it's hate just, there's the nothing idea. that you can do. I hate the idea the Super Bowl teams are not there because in 2005, when they lost the Super Bowl, and then that Pro Bowl was that next week. And, you know, we, of course, devastating loss against the Steelers. We all know the story. Mm-hmm. A week later, I'm watching, you know, five or six of our guys trot out together. And I'm like, wow, you know, it was like a chance for the Super Bowl loser to kind of get a little bit of, you know, optimism back in their fan base a little bit. Because, you know, that team, whoever it is that loses, is going to have five or six guys on the Pro Bowl. Because of the champion yeah. of the conference, and to get to see them play again on a different, you know, stage, and go, wow, okay, we're ready for next year. To me, that kind of cleansed, helped cleanse that XL out a little bit when I watched them in the Pro Bowl. I know it's yeah, weird, that, but that's another thing that I think they should change. I don't like having it the week before the Super Bowl. No, I think it should no. be the week afterwards, so the people that are playing in the Super Bowl have the opportunity to also play in the Pro Bowl. Absolutely, 
They're the best. And the best. I the other thing is you've got all those players all together at the same time in the sort of same place as well, which means you could bring in some counsellors to help them get off their addiction to prostitution. You could get <laughs> some counsellors to get them off their addiction to drugs. You can help Johnny Manziel. You need to calm down, there. Matt. You need to calm down. You know, all of that could be happening at the Pro Bowl. We could call it the Prostitute Bowl. Pro Bowl. <laughs> The rehab. And, yeah. and while we're at it, can uh, Russell Wilson play behind Team Irvin's offensive line every week? Not oh, my just God. The Pro Bowl? Oh, God, yes. How oh, great God, was yes. that first th- first play? <laughs> yeah. Oh, to DeAndre Hopkins. That was sweet. The, the pass, oh, my yeah. God. That was spectacular. It, just the way he stood in the I just He stood in the pocket. It, just the way he stands in the pocket all year anyway. But that first play where he just stood in the pocket and just delivered that ball down, I'm like, yeah, I hope the rest of the NFL is watching. Go ahead and yeah. keep him in the pocket, please. Go ahead and keep him I, in the pocket. I tell you what, the most surprising thing about that to me, I didn't realize DeAndre Hopkins was that fast because mm-hmm. Russell Wilson actually underthrew him by about yeah, a yard. Right. And they like turn around to catch it. It's like, wow, that is fast. Just amazing. <laughs> How lucky are we yeah. to have that guy? I tell you. Yeah. Well, guys, I think that will be enough Pro Bowl talk because there wasn't much to talk about the Pro Bowl, but we wanted to get that out before the end of the third season. So uh, let's go ahead and take a break here. It's the end of the third quarter, bitches. Coming up next, some fun off-the-wall Super Bowl 50 prop bets. You are listening and watching the 12th Man Fan Jam show, full of Fandango, Kerfluffle, and Molly Whopping. We'll be right back. You're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam <laughs> on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. And now, it's time for the fourth quarter of the 12th Man Fan Jam. Here to lead us through the final quarter is once again our host, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, welcome to the fourth and final quarter of the finale of the third season of your 12th Man Fan Jam show. Uh, We are going to talk not about the Super Bowl per se, but I'm going to subject the posse to some over and unders and some prop bets from Super Bowl 50 that I found. They're a little off the wall, so let's get right into that. We'll start with the over under, and since this is kind of um, this is kind of Dustin's thing on the show, we're going to start with him. But before we do, I want to tell you I am going to write down what you pick, and uh, you're going to get two points for every one you get right for over and under. So. We'll come back on our next show. The start of the fourth season, we will start by talking about who won the prop bets for Super Bowl 50. So, Dustin, we're going to start with you. The over-under total score that I found, and it may change, but for me, the over-under total score for Super Bowl 50 is 43. Dustin, are you over or under on that? I want to say under, and the reason why is because I'm hoping that the Broncos win. I think if it's over, it's because the Panthers run up the score. Uh, the Broncos' offense, I don't think, can hang with the Panthers' offense. So it would have to be a defensive game. and Because um, those defenses, are they're both pretty fun to watch, pretty stout. So yeah, uh, I, I got to go the under, pulling for the Broncos. All right. Will? Um, I agree with uh, – well, I agree with Dustin's reasoning. I think Denver's got to – make it a defensive struggle to win. They're not going to win a shootout, but I'm picking the over. I'm picking the over because I think the Panthers are going to win this. Okay. Uh, Matt. I don't care. Matt does not care. No caring for Matt. I'd go under. So, no points. Go under. No points. Matt goes under. Go under. You already said you don't care. You can't call You can't I don't do care, it but I'll still go under. <laughs> I still I'll go under. Points. Look, That's let's totally what we like about you, man. Oh, let's, 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 let's be honest with you, Dustin. Whatever I choose here, I'm not going to get any of these damn points anyway. And if I do get any of these damn points, I'm not going to count towards anything. Well, then so pick gonna... over because that's what we'll pick. Well, no. no. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll go the other, I'll say it's going to be dead on, Moses. It's going to nah, be dead on. you're going Yander. All right. You better, you better not win. Um, Matt, <laughs> or I mean, uh, God, Dustin. Dustin, yeah. Cam's rushing yards for the game. The over and under is at 38 for his rushing yards. Oh, he's going over. Wow. Not even a thought. Will? Well, um, I'm going to give... Uh, Dustin, another chance to come up on me. Um, I'm going to pick under. I think Denver's going <laughs> to... 
<laughs> well, wasn't that when you wasn't that you were what you were saying the last couple weeks of the yeah, no, I had to make a move on. Yeah, I had to make a move yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, oh, that's boy. Okay. That's getting yeah. nasty. Um, I get but, the boring. I'll get the poor music, Andy. Hold on a minute. But any anyway, I'm going to pick under. I think Denver's going to do what they can to keep them in the pocket. I just don't think it's going to be enough. I'm going to pick under, Matt. Well, I just want to make. Dustin's day, so I'm going to go with Dustin and say it's going to be over because everything I pick never wins. All right. Dang it. Well, you know, I didn't give my reason why. I think that they're going to. Um, I don't think they're going to contain. I don't think they're going to go out there with the intent to contain. I think they're going to attack Cam, which is going to throw him off his spot, make it hard for him to throw. But it's also going to allow him to run. So I think he's going to have more scrambles, like not designed run plays, but scrambles where he picks up yards here and there, and that's why it's going to be over. All right. Uh, next one, uh, Dustin. Manning's passing yards. The over and under is at two thirty-five. Is this counting the yards that the Panthers get if they intercept? No. Okay, just checking. Um, mm-hmm. man, that's. I'll say over. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin oh, says over. Over. <laughs> yeah. Well. No, I hate to agree with Dustin, but I think Manning's going to have a little bit better game than people expect, at least stats-wise. I think he's going to have to, but yeah. um, mm-hmm. I'm picking over as well. I'm thinking over as well. Um, Matt? Over. Uh, we're all on that one. All right. Final one, Dustin. Jersey number to score the first touchdown. The jersey number at 30, over or under? Wait, what? <laughs> the jersey number of the player that scores the first touchdown. Is it going to be the jersey number? Will it be under 30 or over 30? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's asking. a weird one. That is a very yeah. weird one. Yeah, I told you I had some off the wall ones. I thought you were asking me what number jersey I thought would score. So I was thinking of that. I was like going through uh, my head. 20,004. <laughs> All right. Um, I assume it'll be a wide receiver, so I'll go over. Okay. Will? Under, it's going to be one. We're going to get the Superman pose and all the other there BS. Yeah, there I'm going over, Matt. Under, it's going to be one. Okay. All right. Now, for three points, you each there get be one of these. One. You each get one of these, and it's only one person. So, I will start. This is a which is bigger. Boom. Yeah. Boom, bye. Oh, I see that. Why, thank you. Okay. Which is bigger, and I get the first one. The Thunder and Warriors play a basketball game on February 6th, the same time or the same day as the Super Bowl. Uh, which will be bigger? Which number will be bigger? Manny's completions or Kevin Durant's points? And I'm going to go with Kevin Durant's points. I think he'll score between 20 and 30. I'm not sure Manny's going to complete 30 passes, but I'm going to go with Man- Durant's points on that. Okay, Will, you ready? Sure. You a hockey fan? I am. Okay, good. I figured you were. Um, on February 7th, the uh, Montreal Canadiens uh-huh, will be playing the Carolina Hurricanes. And what they want to know is the total goals in that game versus the total receptions by Greg Olson. I'm going to go with Greg Olson. All right. Dustin. Mm-hmm. Are you a golfer? No, it kind of pissed me off with the Thunder reference, though, just saying. Oh, <laughs> but sorry. go ahead. Yeah. The go- we killed all the golfers. We killed uh. all the golfers. Then, no, we got, not golfers, the little guys. He's called Dustin the Gopher. <laughs> the golfers. So. Oh, oh, we can kill them. We don't need a reason. Okay, Dustin, Tiger Woods, first round score at the 2016 Masters or Emmanuel Sanders receiving yards. Which score will be higher? <laughs> Um, well, I'm gonna say Tiger scored because he's not been good. <laughs> when in when in when in the hell is the Masters? I don't even know. Uh, I don't know. Who probably cares? like probably June or something. Um, Matt, I, I know mm. it's in Georgia. You believe this? I actually have an Arsenal question for you. Are you familiar with Arsenal? Oh, the soccer team. The, yeah, the yeah the soccer. Oh, you said soccer. He meant football. Yeah. Arsenal plays on February 7th. Which number will be bigger? Arsenal's total goals in that game or Peyton Manning's touchdown passes? 
Um, Manning's touchdowns passes. Arsenal not had a great season. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying oh, to sound. I'm know. trying to sound like I know anything about Arsenal. I know nothing about Arsenal. And you, I see all you have stadium, to do I, is just use your I, accent. We'll believe you. I see. I see this. <laughs> I see their stadium a lot, but I, I don't. I don't know much about them. Pretend it's a trivia game, Matt. There you go. Oh, put, it'll you, be put your hat on. Yeah. Man, man, he's such a He's gonna have four of them. So, oh my gosh. You well, said guys, we're gonna. I thought point. you said Manchester. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, we become a a, a, a soccer, pre- the English Premier League soccer show. Wayne Rooney rules. Yeah. That, no. Um, good enough. Well, Nesson, before we finish this show and the season, we'd like to thank everyone who listens. Uh, if you do at this point, it'd be a miracle. Crazy Anyone who bastards. smiles. Um, <laughs> you know, I always say this show is made up of fans just like you, and that's truly who we are. You know, and there aren't a better group of guys I'd rather sit around talking Seahawk football with than my posse. So, fellas, thanks for a great third season. Looking forward to the fourth. Thank you. Thanks for um, all your work, Moses. Mm-hmm. Good, good stuff. A lot of fun. Uh, and thanks to the wonderful friends and family that join us as guests and had guest predictors all season. Uh, you see their names on the screen right now. A wonderful group of friends and family that we all care very deeply for. Your contributions this season are greatly appreciated, and we look forward to hearing from you very soon. Uh, it's been a crazy season for the Seahawks, and it's been a crazy one here at the 12th Man Fan Jam Show. Like the Seahawks, we've had our fair shares of ups and downs. And like the Seahawks, we'll take a small hiatus, do some show tweaking, and return back to do all of that for a fourth season very, very soon. So. For now, it looks like it's time to bring another wonderful and amazing 12th Man Fan Jam season to a sad close. We are so glad you decided to waste some of your time this season with us. It was, as usual, a season that raised the bar here at Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. We certainly hope you laughed a little and maybe you learned a little something along the way. And what did we learn this season? Well, we learned that Mark loves lamp and needs tokens. We, we mm-hmm. learned that Matt thinks the states in America are squiggly and he keeps his trophy <laughs> and he keeps his trophy polish handy. <laughs> we learned Moses has a terrible French accent and keeps a porn music handy. We learned that. We knew that already. Yeah. We, knew that. That's not we, knew, we learned it doesn't has a very interesting cell phone ring. <laughs> He's the Power, Power Rangers. Goes. Go oh. for Power Rangers. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we learned that English toilet paper sucks. And apparently, and last but not least, we learned that Jim Bob Cooter must never leave the NFL. <laughs> ever. <laughs> so, on behalf of my partner in crime, Matt from Married Old England, our news hound, Shadowhawk Will, Statsman Mark, wherever you are, and Dustin <laughs> as the beaver, this is your self appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity saying thank you all. We will be back with the fourth season real soon. And as always, Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Go Hawks! So long and thanks for all the fish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs>